thank you for sharing your emotions. Um, that really touched me. Yeah. So thank you. Um, I feel a bit guilty because yesterday I said I didn't really believe that you were Jesus. Although I didn't say those things earlier to make you feel guilty. No, no, I know you didn't. <coughs> Although you know the content is so beautiful, and I you know yeah. really get such a beautiful energy from you. Yeah. And so you know, I sort of sat here just then thinking, well, what's going on with me that I instantly said, well. I think that's crap that you're Jesus. And um, I think it's, I mean, I'm not sure because, you know, I can't process stuff yeah. at the moment because I feel a bit, I don't know. But I think it's to do with my own unworthiness. Mm. You know, that how could Jesus be in my backyard? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've heard, being exploring this new age sort of stuff for 30 years, and yeah. I um, heard about the, you know, second coming of Jesus and stuff, and then how can he be in my backyard? I mean, mm. like my, you know, I just can't compute with that, yeah. you know, to, to do with, you know, perhaps this deep unworthiness. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing is that I, what I find is when I say, when I talk about myself being Jesus, the biggest projections I get generally are related to the fact that people then think I'm saying that I'm better than them. Mm. And so that automatically yeah. then triggers any feelings of unworthiness that they have within themselves. Which of course they, because they don't want to feel, yeah. project back at me as anger or some other kind of emotion that's a capping emotion. And I'm just saying who I am because if I stay in my truth, I have to say. The other thing I learned quite early in my own progression, which um, mm -hmm. when when I found the divine love path again, it was five years ago when I found my path again. So I've been dealing with my emotions for 12 years, but it was only five years ago that I actually found. Like, all these things just came to me of memories, just memories that came to me. And, and I felt like I rediscovered everything again at that stage. And when I went through that, um, one of the things that came to me was that, that people would reject me if I said who I was. And that was a deep fear that I had. Um, and so what I had to do then is work through those fears emotionally, of course, because I was also afraid of dying again as a result of saying the way. And I'll tell you why, uh, as we talk maybe, because there's some first century emotions related to, to many of these things. But what actually happened was that um, I had to work through these emotions in such a way that I eventually I had to come to see whether I was Jesus or not, or whether there was just a spirit influencing me somehow, or all these different possibilities that I knew of. <coughs> it could be, you know. And so what I had to do then was uh, go through and resolve the issue between myself and God, really. And I had to test out my relationship with God and see when the divine love flows. And when the divine love flows, you can feel it flowing through you. And you can also feel it when it stops. And so what I had to do then, the only thing I could do, and I was never, there was never any mediumship, I was never told by any person who, who I was. And, and um, since I have been, after I'd worked it out myself, but only after I've worked it out myself. There's been many people who've come and told me that they know of Jesus. But um, before, no, none of that happened at the start. What I had to do was I had to work through emotionally the issue between myself and God, which was quite a long-winded process for me. It took me eight months to do that. And of dealing with my emotions pretty much every day. Um, and a lot of that process was very, very difficult. Um, for me as well, because it's like having a split identity almost um, for for some time before before I could actually cope with it intellectually. Then, of course, all of the memories and all of the feelings and all of the other things that were flowing as well were confusing enough because uh, I knew I didn't have any of those experiences in my life, and so I had to go through and actually resolve all those issues with God. So what I found was that every time that I refused to accept the truth about my identity my connection with God would cease and I would be in a state where I was alone again. And when, when, I, when I could intellectually accept, at least, not emotionally accept yet, that I was, then I would start feeling the flow of divine love again. And so the only way that in the end that I could determine the truth about that issue myself was all of these feelings and emotions and memories were coming to me, but I feel unworthy to be Jesus. Right? And so, because of that, um, I could not accept all of these memories 
uh, that were coming to me. So I'm having all these memories of my first century life and my spirit life, and I'm writing them all down frantically. <laughs> so I've got books of them, but but I can't accept them because I can't accept that I am Jesus right? because of the um, feelings of unworthiness. <coughs> But every time I, ref I refused to accept it, my connection with God would stop. So then I was in this conundrum, if you like. What do I do? do I, if I, I wanted to teach, because it's always been a desire to, to teach the truth if I found it, and I felt I, I knew it and found it. But on the other side, every time I didn't say, every time I stopped saying that I was Jesus, or didn't want to say I was Jesus, I, my connection with God stopped, and then I couldn't teach either. So it, it, it set up all of this conundrum which took, took a, n a number of years for me to resolve, uh, emotionally resolve them. And, uh, and in a lot of ways I'm still, because of the unworthiness issue, still being present. Um, it still comes up in groups in particular. And that's one of the reasons, in fact, at the moment it's probably the only reason why I'm doing groups. Because um, I do get a lot of projections of emotions in a group. And the beauty of that is that it exposes the areas within myself that are still unhealed, mm. and that's why I keep doing it. We, pr we promise to keep doing that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just one other thing, I can't believe Mary finds you, it has issues with you physically. Many of us find you very incredibly mm. sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a <his> son. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm his son, and I think he's Now I feel embarrassed. <laughs> Her, her issues are not revolving so much about the physical, but more to do with issues of security. Um, the feeling that she has from the first century was that I didn't keep her secure. And one of the feelings that she reincarnated with was this desire to have a man keep her secure. Her father is quite a, a, a well-built man and, and stocky. And um, that's her image of somebody who can protect her, who can keep her secure. She doesn't... <coughs> she hasn't because she's yet to feel through that emotional mm. process. She she views me as being too slight to mm. be too to be protect her. Snap. Hey, you know, snap. I might break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, I might. <laughs> and and so you know, um, a lot of it's to do with that. Mm. But a, a lot of it is also what happened. We were to, we've been together for two months, um, mm -hmm. and we were overseas. And she met up with me overseas. Um, and we were together for a couple of months. And during those few months, a lot of emotions come up for her and a lot of memories come up for her about her first century life. Now, if you can just imagine for a moment, you're, you're 30 years of age around about, and for the first moment in your life, you're having memories about a 2,000-year-old person. And they feel like they're your memories. So how's that going to feel for you? That's going to be very scary. She's had a very good upbringing compared to myself, perhaps. Like her, her family have been much more loving and caring with her than my family have with me. And she, um, the way we split our emotions was that she had a terrible time in the first century. She had lots of abuse and rape issues in the first century to deal with. Um, and you know, her life after I passed was very hard as well. And I took many of those memories. When you're in the soul union state, you can actually take memories and split up the memories that you have as a complete soul. So I took many of her memories. So I came into the world believing that I'd been abused and sexually abused and raped. Um, whereas she came in feeling free of all of those things. Um, so I've had to work my way through all of those kinds of emotions as well. Now, she obviously, having a, a much more, shall we call it, normal existence, um, this is a major confronting thing for her, as you can understand. And, uh, and I understand completely like the emotions that she's going through. One of the emotions that she's facing mostly is the emotion of anger towards me. In the first century, I did make choices where I knew she was out of harmony with love and I was in harmony with love, so I made the choice in harmony with love. But because we were a couple, she believed that I was actually making choices and not, and not doing it together. And she wanted me to do it together. So obviously there were quite a number of those kind of emotions. She was also quite angry for me for, for choosing to die uh, as she sees it. 
um, and she feels that I left her, abandoned her, and she's still got a lot of those emotions as well. There's also emotions of shame about the memories uh, that she has about her first century life, particularly sexual shame and shame rela related to some of the events that occurred around her life. And, and it's very, very scary for her to even contemplate dealing with any first century emotion. So, the way she's feeling at the moment, or the last time I spoke with her, was that she dearly wants to follow the divine love path. But, she dearly does not want to have any first century emotions. <laughs> now, that's a pretty difficult conundrum to be in for her, because most of her causal emotions are related to the first century just like all of mine have been related to the first century. And so it's uh, very, very difficult for her now to, to feel so. But she, she, like, when you meet her, <laughs> um, she's a very beautiful person. And you will see her strength of character. And you will also see her humility too. She's a very humble person, but at the moment not humble about dealing with first century emotions. Yeah. And it's very, like, it took, like I said, it took me years to work through these issues that she's been confronted with over a space of two months. Mm 